Hello everyone, this is Devin, offering up some festive mind munchies for everyone's enjoyment. Given the time of year, it seemed appropriate to discuss things that occur, well, this time of year. The time right before Christmas and all the fun, wonderful things that are going on at that festive time. However, we're not actually here to talk about the time before Christmas specifically. What we're here to talk about is holiday misery, specifically. So... That's right. What we're here to discuss is going to be more about all the misery that perpetuates the time right before Christmas to understand why it is and to also, like everything else we do, help offer some suggestions to help fix it, to maybe give you an opportunity to get away from the misery. In honor of this festive topic, I've taken the liberty of writing a short little poem. "'Twas the weeks before Christmas, and all through the malls, "'people were gathered, filling the halls. "'But instead of spreading Christmas cheers, "'they were snarling and angry, giving everyone evil sneers. "'Isn't that what seems to be happening when we go to the malls this time of year? "'Everyone is just angry and miserable. "'Why is that? Why is it that this time of year brings out such negativity in people? "'Well... I've taken a liberty to create a picture that will hopefully shed some light on the subject. Here it is. As you can see in the first little picture there, we have Santa's elves on strike being really quite miserable looking, right? And then of course there's Santa and the other one trying to stuff down this great big bag of toys also looking quite miserable. Well, the key element that the misery is directed at is really the bags of what? What's inside the bags that's making everyone so miserable? And, of course, the answer is presents. That's right, the whole root of all of the misery this time of year is the presents. But why? Why do the presents cause so much misery? We have other present holidays, like Valentine's Day, right? We don't see that much misery at Valentine's Day, not like we do at Christmas. So, obviously, there must be something behind the presents, something that the presents are hiding that really is the root of the misery. Well, I've also created another picture that shows two basic equations that will hopefully clear up the rest of the mystery. <laughs> For many, of course, this simple picture is going to be somewhat self-explanatory. And for those that it isn't, let me explain. What we have is two simple equations. The first is a simple idea that money equals presents, right? Got to have money to buy presents. That's just the way it works, isn't it? And then, of course, the second equation is that presents equals love. Of course, the deeper meaning of the equation is that money buys presents equals love. And of course, the more money we spend, the bigger the presents, therefore the more love we end up with. Well, why is it that at this time of year, everyone is so interested in buying love? They're not buying presents for the people they love. They're trying to buy love directly. And that's why people are so miserable, because you're interfering with their ability to get their love of their family, their children, or whatnot. And that's really what's going on in their head. But why? Why is there this need? Well, unfortunately, we live in a society where people feel very guilty that they don't have time to spend with their families. They're so busy working and so busy earning money to buy all the things in life that they don't have any time to spend time with anyone. So, of course, come Christmas time, the present giving major holiday, it kind of hits that, you know, I haven't really spent any time with my family. And, well, the whole point of Christmas is to celebrate family, really. And so all that guilt surfaces, all that resentment at self that I haven't been there and I haven't really been a good parent and whatever. So, of course, I have to make up for it and I'm going to spend as much money as humanly possible to win as much love as humanly possible so that I can sustain it for another year. Of course, for those that are offended, I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm just stating the blatantly obvious. The truth is, we've all known it for years. That's what the whole topic of the commercialization of Christmas is all about. And truthfully, we've been laughing at you behind your backs for doing it. Of course, laughing about it behind your back really isn't going to help anybody, is it? It's just spreading more misery more often than not. So the whole point behind this topic is to actually enlighten everybody, to bring it into the forefront. Instead of having it hidden behind all the presents, <laughs> let's bring it to the surface and discuss it openly and honestly and realistically. Because, of course, that's the only way we're ever going to deal with it. 
So, obviously, the first thing we need to discuss is how to get out of this trap. How to make sure that we're not falling into it in the first place. How to change that equation into something more like this. The simple, easiest way to ensure that you don't fall into that trap and therefore negate the equation is to stop and look at your motives. If you feel you don't have a choice in the matter, if you feel like if you don't go and spend all the money, you're doomed, that pretty much proves in a nutshell that you are buying love. Because how is love and doom going to ever come together unless it's a false sense of love that you're after, right? Love and doom just don't mix. So if you feel trapped, if you feel like you don't have a choice, if you feel like these people are going to hate you or it's just going to be misery if you don't, what you're doing is you're showing reality, but you're negating it and trying to put it on them instead of on yourself, right? The misery isn't real. It's an illusion that you're using to justify falling for the trap. So if you get out of that trap, then of course you don't have to go into it in the first place. So motives are the single best, easiest thing to look at to see if you're in the trap or not. The second is actually to look at other alternatives, to instead of just buying presents willy-nilly and then worrying about how you're going to pay them off later, is to stop and actually start a Christmas budget by first deciding how much money you have to spend total for Christmas. That's on like the food, the decorations, all the presents for everybody, right? Not looking at what you spend on each person, that you can do next. But the whole point is look at how much you have for everybody. That gives you a chance to have a reality check and see, do I really want to spend this much money? Then of course you can take the time to break that down. Who, how much do I want to spend for each person at each time, right? But of course, there's more to it than just that. You also have to decide how much you have and how much you're going to have to borrow. Of course, once you have a chance to see that you have this much and you have to borrow this much, then you get to make another judgment call, right? Are you prepared to go into debt for Christmas to that level? Remember, all of the borrowed money you're going to have to pay interest on, so it's not going to be simple money, right? You borrow $1,000 for Christmas, if it takes you until next December to pay off, you could be paying as much as like $1,500 back. You know, do you really want to do that? The better bet is to have more money and borrow less, like this. <laughs> of course, this gives you a better option. See, here you have more money to work with and you're just borrowing a little bit to round it out. That's a better option. However, the best option is to start and only budget what you actually have. If you don't have it in the bank right now, if you don't have it to spend right now, then of course that should give you pause to really decide what's most important for Christmas. Because if you're going to be in debt for a whole year to pay off Christmas, that's not beneficial. And potentially that's going to be taking away other options. The truth is, is that there's other options than just buying presents, right? And here's a simple one, right? As you can see here, you've got money for presents. You've got money for savings. You've got money for education, right? In the end of the day, if you are spending so much money that you don't have any money for your kids to have like a university or college fund, then that's a problem, right? If you're sapping their future by giving them presents that don't really last or that they're not going to appreciate in a year anyway, then that's not really an effective Christmas present, is it? It's so much better to give something that matters and having a nest egg to give you safety and having money to pay for their education, that's a much, much better idea, right? Now, all of this, the whole point and focus is to give you a chance to think it through. If you don't have a nest egg, if you're spending more money than you have, then you're hurting yourself because if anything happens, what's that going to do to you, right? If you lose your job, if something happens, how are you going to pay for the Christmas that you've already paid for and all the interest that's accumulating? So it's not really a good idea. The best thing you can do is decide how much you have now to spend and stick to that budget. We're not saying you can't have a happy Merry Christmas. We're just trying to get you to make sure you're in it for the right reason. To make sure you're not trying to buy love, but you're just trying to buy presents for the people you love. That's it. So best of luck in your holiday season and have a Merry Christmas.